Do we want to introduce ourselves? Uh, evolving Open One. Do you guys want to? Yeah. Um, Jeffrey Builder, Director of Strategy at Crossref. I'm Matthew Sutter, I'm the publisher at the American Physical Society. Elizabeth Kirk, Associate University Librarian for Information Services at Dartmouth College. Melinda Kenaway, Executive Director of uh, QDOS, or KUDOS, if you're on this side of the Atlantic. Uh, Josh Nicholson, founder of The Win Award. Paul Murphy, Director of Publishing at the RAND Corporation. Peter Potter, uh, Director of Publishing Strategy at Virginia Tech. Frank Zander from the Max Planck Society, Director of the Max Planck Digital Library. Great. Um, so our presentation has actually gotten much shorter because I, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the rule of seminars, uh, which I think can apply also to the rule of conferences, and that is that the first part is for everyone, the second part is for the experts, and the third part is only for the speakers because no one's listening. Uh, so hopefully you'll follow along. It's very uh, simple, which is, I, I don't have it in front of me because my computer has died. Um, these are the things that we came up with a group, and I think, you know, as a community, things that we value, not necessarily just as open solutions to have them be open, but because we think they're the best practices for, you know, producing meaningful research. So data sharing, normalized metadata and taxonomies, open access, the development of software, cell lines, reagents, tools uh, in general, so there's a lot of other tools out there that are quite useful, peer review in the many forms that it takes, uh, blogs, social media, or more generally outreach, um, training students. After all, we're not just publishing and then ignoring the students, we're training them, training new researchers. Um, and then last but not least, or maybe least, uh, publications, preprints, monographs, uh, essays, writing. So the question we asked, how do we get to these? These are already out there, but they're not used uh, really at scale. You know, they're kind of experimented with over here. This person likes to do this. It makes them feel good, so maybe then they, they produce better research. But I think the real question we need to be asking is, do these explicitly help a researcher's career? If we want um, them to come to the fore, we need to value them. Asked another way, do funders and P&T committees uh, count these? Do they look at these? Is this actually something that they're measuring or just something that they're saying that they're measuring? If not, then we should change that. Uh, and we should make sure how we're counting these and how we're evaluating these uh, are as good as, as they can be. So, you know, we keep talking about the impact factor as one metric, so let's move beyond that and develop some other ones. So we come up with three easy steps. Um, very easy to, to reform the entire system. First, uh, understand how it works. So we talked a lot about evaluation. Everyone kind of says, if you have these papers and these publications, you're going to get a good job. Is that really how it is? What else are um, the different evaluators, grant funding agencies, or, or the committees looking at? So understand how it works at a basal line, and then define the future ideal. Do we really care about blogs? Do we want this type of outreach? And if we do, then we need to come up with a way so that they count um, and that they're measured. And then three, uh, make this, uh, the evaluation system transparent so that it can kind of continually act uh, as a check. So that's our, our very short, brief presentation and our, our simple step that maybe OSI can you know, do in the next week, uh, by May 9th. <laughs> Thank you.